if we can multiply a matrix from the left by an elementary matrix, and the result is the same as if we had performed that elementary operation on the original matrix, then we can think of doing the same thing in reverse. In other words, we can think of using elementary row operations on a matrix as a series of steps that can be represented by elementary matrices instead. So what I'd like to do in this video is to take uh, a matrix A, I'm going to call it A, and I'll just use a three by three matrix this time. I'm going to use a one, zero, zero, negative four, one, one, and negative one, zero, one. This is my matrix A. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to find a way to represent this matrix or to perform uh, elementary row operations on this matrix so that, let's do this, elementary row operations so that it becomes matrix B, which I want to be two, zero, negative one, negative six, one, two, and negative one, zero, one. All right. Um, I can do the elementary row operations, uh, or I can identify the elementary row operations, and then I can represent those by elementary matrices. And so that's the goal in, in this particular exercise. So one of the things that I've noticed here is that if I take uh, row one here and subtract row three, get one minus negative one, which is one plus one or two. And that gives me the entry I have here. And so I'm going to test that, that operation or that sequence of operations um, matches the, the corresponding entries in, in two and, and columns two and three. So I did row one minus row three. I'm going to do row one minus row three here. Zero minus zero is zero. That gives me zero. And zero minus one gives me negative one. So if I take row one and subtract row three, I'll get a new row one. Now, I'm not really supposed to write this as a subtraction, but it's really easy to change the order here. What I'm going to write this, uh, the way I'm going to write this operation is as row three, negative one times row three plus row one. And I'm going to put that into the position row one, because that's where I found the result of that operation. Okay, and what this here is, this negative one times R3 plus R1, this can be represented by uh, an elementary matrix. If I take, let's go off to the side here, if I take the three by three identity matrix, and I do this same operation, subtract row three from row one. I'm going to write it as negative row three plus row one. I'll get row two doesn't change. Um, I'm replacing it into row one. So although I'm using row three, it doesn't, it doesn't change row three. And I'm taking row one minus row three. In each case, I get one minus zero. 0 minus 0, and 0 minus 1. So this is my E1. It's the elementary matrix that corresponds to this elementary row operation to turn matrix A into matrix B. So I'm going to argue then that I can write B as elementary matrix E, E1, times it's going to turn out possibly another one. Um, it has to be another one. So let, let's just stick that in there to E2, E1 times E2 times A. Notice that we're multiplying both E1 and E2 from the left of A. So, and, and I found elementary matrix E1. So now I can write this as 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. I'll need to find another one because I'm not, I haven't, I haven't found uh, my row threes don't change. 
my row one changed and I have figured out how to change row one using this elementary matrix, but I haven't yet figured out how to change row two. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I need uh, a second elementary matrix and then I'll have, oops, well, I used the wrong pen there. Uh, and then I'll have my matrix A, which is one, zero, zero, negative four, one, one, and negative one, zero, one. So ultimately this will be my answer, but I still need to figure out what this elementary matrix two is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this first elementary matrix, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, I'm going to do that multiplication with matrix A, which is 1, 0, 0, 4, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, to get an intermediate or an interim step. And I'm going to call that A1. And let's see what that's going to look like. I'll, I'll have uh, row 1 times column 1. So I'll have 1 times 1 plus 0 plus one, which is two. And then I'll have um, one times zero, which is zero. Zero times one, and negative one times zero. That sum is zero. And then negative, well, one times zero, zero times one, and one times, negative one times one. So I have negative one. And that shouldn't come as a surprise because that was um, that's our first row in matrix B, which is our goal matrix, our target matrix. And that's this matrix here is what gives us um, it's what gave us that first row, the, the row that we were looking for in matrix B. So the fact that we performed that should not come as a surprise, right? That that, that we've accomplished what we set out to, to do. We've, we've used now the matrix that we found over here on matrix A to produce this first, the first row that we were looking for. But this is just one of two elementary matrices. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out um, this matrix multiplication. The second row and the third row, when I multiply those by this matrix here, um, this one's just going to reproduce the second row, and this one's just going to reproduce the third row because they're just the second and third row in the identity matrix. So just because that's still a relatively new concept, let's go ahead and, and perform these um, multiplications. I get 0 times 1 plus 1 times negative 4 plus 0 times 0 is negative 4. Then I get... 0 times 0, 1 times 1, and 0 times 0, which is 1. Add those together, I get 1. Then 0 times 1, 1 times 1, and 0 times 1. And that's sum of 1. 0 times 1, 0 times negative 4, and 1 times negative 1. 0 times, where am I? 0 times 0, 0 times 1, and 1 times 0. And 0 times 0, 0 times 1, and 1 times 1. So here is my interim step, my interim matrix. I'm calling it A sub 1 just to distinguish it from A. It is the matrix A with one elementary row operation or one elementary matrix applied to it. But what I need to do now is figure out how do I get from here to matrix B. In other words, what do I have to do to, uh, let's see, I'll put it here. Two, zero, negative one, negative four, one, one, negative one, zero, one. What matrix do I need to multiply uh, that by to get B? And so I need to look now at this matrix and figure out what um, what elementary row operations should I do to this to get the matrix B? The first row is correct. The, the last row is correct. The only row that's not correct is the second row. So what do I need to do 
to rows uh, one, two, and three of this matrix to get to this matrix, to get this middle row, to change the middle row. Now I've noticed that if I start with row two and subtract row one, I get negative four minus two, which is negative six, one minus zero, which is one, and one minus negative one, which is two, and that's the correct row. That's the, the, the target row that I'm looking for. So that means that my, my row operations are gonna be, uh, what I said, uh, row two minus row one, but I wanna write that in terms of uh, the multiple of a row plus another row into the second of the two rows. So I'm gonna write negative one times R one plus R two, and I'm gonna make that my new R2. And the elementary row operations, or sorry, the elementary matrix that results from that is the one that I get. I'm just gonna write out I here, first of all. If I take row one here and negate it, change the signs, make that a negative one, and add the result of that to this row, I leave this row as it is and change this row, what I'm gonna get is negative one plus zero, zero plus one, and zero plus zero. So what changes here is that the second row first column becomes a negative one. And this is my E2. So this is what's gonna go in here, but I have one more really major caveat to, uh, to point out before, before we actually do it. E1 is here, and E2 is going to go here, but not. And here's why. Um, in fact, when I multiplied uh, E1, which is this matrix here, by A, which is this matrix here, I did that here, and that gave me A1. It gave me an interim uh, product of two matrices. And the result of that multiplication was, let me see if I can, I'll put it in a, a cloud up here for us. I took matrix A and I first multiplied it by the, the, the matrix I'm calling E1, right? And so I did that multiplication and this matrix now, I'll put it in parentheses, I think. This matrix is a new matrix, and I called it A1. In order to get all the way to B, I then had to multiply that matrix by E2. I haven't actually done that yet. Um, E2 is going to go here in just a minute. And in fact, it, it was going to go here. But I actually have to reverse these two. I have to reverse the order that E1 and E2 are in. Uh, I can change the names if I want to, but I have to revert, reverse the order the actual matrices are in in order for this multiplication to work. Because remember that multiplication of two matrices is not commutative. I cannot just put them in any order and expect to get the same result. So if I retain the names I've got here, E1 and E2, then this is the order that I have to present my multiplication in. And if I want to change the names of my matrices, I can do that. I'm not going to do that just because I think it'll be confusing, but I could if I wanted to call this one E1 and this one E2. What's important is that I do this multiplication first. This is my first elementary matrix, and my second one is E2, one, oh, let's use a different color. one, zero, zero, negative one, one, zero, and zero, zero, one. And so I've done, I found both of the matrices that I need, both of the elementary matrices, matrices that I needed, but I have to be very careful about the order in which I apply them to matrix A in order to get the result, matrix B.